فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We finished the first مقدمة in the explanation of the book ثلاثة الأصول written by العلامة شيخ الإسلام محمد ابن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله We finished the first muqaddimah, the first introduction. We are in the second introduction. And we are on the second mas'ala. We spoke about the first mas'ala. We are now moving on to al-mas'ala to thaniya, the second mas'ala. From the four in which he wants to tell us, rahimahullahu ta'ala. The shaykh, rahimahullah, he says, al-thaniya to the second. أن الله لا يرضى أن يشرك معه أحد في عبادته لا ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل والدليل قوله تعالى وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا This statement of the author, rahimahullah, which is, أن الله, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, لا يرضى, he is not pleased with. أن يشرك معه أحد, that he, is, that he is associated partners with. في عبادته, in his worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not pleased with anyone associating partners with him in his ibadah, in his worship. It can either be malakun muqarrab, and it can even be nabiyun mursal, a sent messenger, a sent prophet. So the, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is not pleased with anyone being associated with him. It could either be a malak that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala loves and is close to him. It could also even be a prophet which he has sent. Every single thing is abidun lillahi jalla wa ala. Everything is a slave to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So this mas'ala to thaniya, the shaykh rahimahullah, he is talking about tawheedul uluhiyyah. And what he mentions is that that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is pleased with Tawheed. Inna yarda, the thing that pleases Allah is what? At Tawheed. Allah is pleased and yu'bada wahdahu that he is worshipped alone. Duna ma siwah besides everything else. فَمَنْ أَشْرَكَ مَعَ اللَّهِ Whoever associate partners with Allah wa ta'ala He has negated and gone against الغاية العملية التي كلف بها من خلقه وبالإجاده He has fully negated the reason in which he was brought into existence for and the reason why Allah created him. You are fighting, you are negating that goal. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in many places in the Quran that he isn't pleased with it. If you look at, for instance, Surah Al-Zumar, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ Allah is not pleased for his slaves kufr. Also Allah Ta'ala he says in Surah Al-Ma'idah Ayah 3 
وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا And I am happy and I am pleased with Islam as your religion. Rather, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He refers to associating partners with Him as oppression. إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Shirk is the greatest form of oppression. So Allah does not like oppression. If you go to the hadith of Abi Dhar, Al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ibadi, ila inni harramtu al-dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tadalamu. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says in the hadith al-Qudusi, إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الظُّلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِي I made oppression haram on myself وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا And I have made oppression haram from within yourselves from amongst yourselves فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا Do not oppress The greatest form of oppression is a shirk And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like associating partners with him. Now one may ask a question and say then, if Allah is not pleased with shirk, and if Allah is not pleased with kufr, then why is it taking place? Are you trying to say and assert that what is happening is happening without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his will and his want? Huh? This rida, this pleasement that we're referring to is the legislational rida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shar'an is not pleased with kufr and shirk. Shar'an. Are you with me? Shar'an is not. Legislation wise, Allah does not like oppression and it's, pre- it's oppression. صح? But He is pleased with it universally. صح? Nothing can happen without His will. So, universally, He does. So, I believe. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has qada kawni and qadar kawni and he also has shar'i so the thing that we're talking about here is or the author is speaking about here which is anna Allah la yarda an yushraka ma'ahu ahad he's talking about the shar'i the legislational rida that's why the universal Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is pleased with it. And that's why it that's why it happens. Then the author brings as an as a evidence for this وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The masajid are for who? Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala فَلَا فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Do not call on to anyone besides Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Let's ponder on this verse. This ayah is ayah 18 in Surah Al-Jinn, right? Allah says, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ So we have to understand bringing the evidence forward on behalf of the Sheikh, Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he brought this evidence forward after he mentions a point. He now brought an evidence. We need to find the relationship between his statement and the evidence which he brought. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The masajid are for Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Where is the relationship between his statement and this ayah? 
The relationship is as follows. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ The masajids are for Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُوا Do not what? Call on to. فَلَا تَدْعُوا Is du'a'u mas'ala. Do not ask and request. And I'll explain what du'a mas'ala means, inshaAllah ta'ala. فَلَا تَدْعُوا Do not supplicate. Do not ask of. مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا With Allah tabarak wa ta'ala anyone. فَلَا تَدْعُوا is du'a mas'ala. مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا is du'a ibadah. Let's break it down inshaAllah ta'ala. The masjid, two things are done in it. Al-masajid, yuf'alu fiha shay'an. Two things are done in the masjid. The first thing that is done in the masjid is Dua'ullahi Jalla wa'ala We go to the masjid and we supplicate to Allah. We ask of Him. We ask Him for children. We ask Him for rain. We ask Him for provision. We ask Him for forgiveness. We ask Him for paradise. We seek refuge from the hellfire. We seek refuge, re- refuge from the evils of our own nafs and our own selves. Sah? That's dua mas'ala. That's that form of supplication. That is called dua mas'ala. The second thing that we do is we go to the masjid and we pray. We pray obligatory prayers. We pray voluntary prayers. We recite Quran, we remember Allah wa Taala, we study Islamic sciences in the masajid. All of that is what's is what's known as du'a ibadah. All of that is known as what du'a ibadah. The praying is du'a, du'a ibadah. The reciting of the Quran is du'a ibadah. The uh, durus and the lessons and the lectures that are going in the masjid are known as du'a ibadah. Because through the praying that you're doing in the masjid, whether it be a salah, which is fard, obligatory prayer, or whether it be a nafil prayer, a voluntary prayer, through your praying and through your recitation of the Qur'an, you are asking Allah of what? Jannah. And you are seeking from Him protection from the hellfire. So it's called du'a'u ibadah. So that's what the ayah is talking about. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ When the masajids are for Allah, فَلَا تَدْعُوا Do not supplicate and ask of anyone besides Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua'u mas'ala. مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا means when you pray, do not pray to anybody other than Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Do not recite Quran when you go to the masajids and you are there to anybody other than Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Do not, whether the salah can be voluntary prayer, it can be obligatory prayer, it, you know, tilawah of the Qur'an and the recitation, and the dhikr, and the ta'allum, and the ta'lim, all of that. Now that we've understood what is meant by dua'u ibadah and dua'u mas'ala, there is another verse in the Qur'an that also strengthens that meaning. A lot of the mufassirin actually use this verse to prove that the du'a are of, the, are of those two types. This verse was an example for it. There's another verse in the Qur'an that also shows that point. And that is, and that is, the verse in Surah Tughafir, Ayah 60, in which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبَ لَكُمْ وَقَالَ And your Lord says, Udu'uni supplicate to me. Astajib lakum. I will accept your supplication and your dua. Inna alladheena verily the ones. Yastakbiruna huwa arrogant. An ibadati my ibada. Sayadkhuluna jahannama dakhirin. They are going to enter the hellfire. If you look at the beginning of the verse, what does it say? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي And at the ending, what did he say? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي Are you with me? So what the scholars, they said is that 
So what the scholars said is, the first one is what? Du'a'u ibadah, or du'a, sorry, mas'ala, and the second one is what? Du'a'u ibadah. Or even, some of the scholars said that this verse is actually what shows, this verse is what shows that the du'a is a ibadah, that you can't divert it for anybody other than Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Sahih? If I go back to the verse in Surah Tughafir, Ayah 60, what does it say? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِلٍ Right? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ I have to step over this meaning in this verse. Ayah 60, Surah Tughafir. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ Your Lord says, أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ So I'm only going to stand over the part that says, أُدْعُونِي Supplicate to me. أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ I will accept your dua. What's the meaning of astajib lakum? I'll accept your dua. The scholars, they gave it two meanings. One is the meaning I just gave right now, which is astajib lakum, which means u'atikum ma sa'altum. I will give you what you ask for. So ud'uni astajib lakum means what? Supplicate to me and I will give you what you ask for. Another meaning is ud'uni ha? Huh? Pay attention. Ud'uni, ask of me. Ask of me. Ask me for something. Astajib lakum. Ay uthibukum. I will reward you. I will reward you. So if we take the first meaning, which is Ud'uni, ask me. Pay attention. Ask me. Astajib lakum. I'll give you what you asked for then it would be what dua mas'ala and if we say I will reward you is dua ibadah so both of the meanings are in that verse and it is also in the verse which is what and it is also in the verse وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا So we mentioned that right now. The Shaykh Rahimahullah, the Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he summarized all of that for you and he knew when he was saying that. فَلَا تَدْعُوا Do not ask مَعَ اللَّهِ besides Allah أَحَدًا The word أَحَدًا, if we look at it and analyze it properly, it's an indefinite word. How do we know it's an indefinite word? We have this tanween which is known as tanween with tankir, the indefinite tanween. And now we have to understand. And it's in the siyak of what? In what context is, is it in? Is in a negation context, right? Huh? According to the scholars of Usul al Fiqh who deal with this particular field, what did they say? They said that if an indefinite comes in the context of a what? Either a negation, number one. Number two, they said prohibition. The third, which is a shart, condition. The fourth is interrogation, istifham. All of those contexts, if it comes in uh, indefinite, if it comes in the context of any of those, it is a what? It shows generalization. It shows generalization. صح. So here we have فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Do not ask, do not supplicate to anybody other than Allah تبارك وتعالى. صحيح? It, that can be anyone. It can either be ملك مقرب and it could also even be a نبي مرسل. It could be a messenger that is sent. It could also even be an angel that is very close to Allah. Who is the angel that's most closest to Allah? Jibreel. Jibreel is Sayyidul Malaika. And a Nabiyun Mursal is who? 
our Prophet for instance. So if a person gives ibadah, he does dua to what? He does dua to Jibreel for instance, or he makes dua to Nabi Muhammad, he goes against this verse. Because Allah clearly instructed him, فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Ahadan encompasses our Prophet, who is the Nabiul Mursal, and it was, and it also encompasses who? Jibreel, who is Sayyidu, Sayyidul Malaika. <coughs> so that's why the author brought that verse. And that is why he he used it alayhi rahmatullah. The reason why we are not allowed to supplicate to anybody besides Allah is because as I mentioned before in the ayah, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ That the dua is a ibadah. And the hadith for that is the hadith narrated by the noble companion and numan ibn Bashir رضي الله تعالى عنه. The hadith is collected by an Imam Abu Dawood in his sunan. An Imam Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah. On the authority of who? An numan ibn Bashir, that the Prophet said, Ad dua huwa al ibadah, that the dua is ibadah. As for the hadith that Tirmidhi narrated on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, this narration is actually weak. That says, Ad dua mukhul ibadah, that the dua is the marrow of the ibadah. The meaning is correct without a shadow of a doubt. But the, the hadith is weak. The reason why it's weak is because of two. It's weak because of two reasons. The first one is because Al-Walid ibn Muslim is in the narration and he's a mudallis and he narrated it with al-ala. The second reason why that narration is weak is because Walid ibn Muslim actually narrated it from Ibn Lahi'a, Abdullah ibn Lahi'a, who narrated from Ubaidullah ibn Abi Ja'far and Abani ibn Salih and Anas ibn Malik and Ibn Lahi'a is a person اختلط, he mixed up بعد احتراق كتبه when his books got burnt. His narrations started to mix up. So what, would he, what do we have here? We have two problems. The first problem we have is Al-Walid ibn Muslim who is a mudallis. He narrated it with An'ala. And the second problem we have with this, this narration is Ibn Lahi'a اختلط بعد احتراق كتبه. He started to mix up after his books got burnt. Meaning he's a man who used to narrate from his own books. If you want to find more about it, go to the Da'if al-Jami' by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah to be precise, hadith number 3003. <coughs> so it's very important, my beloved brothers and sisters, and it's obligatory on each and every one of us to know this. The knowledge that we have to have of this matter is ilman yaqeeniyan, knowledge that's 100%. Certainty. لا شك فيه ولا شبهة فيه. That there's no doubt in it. It is crystal clear to you. It should never come to your mind in any way, form or shape that it's ever permissible to supplicate to anybody other than Allah. Or that you can do istighatha to anybody other than Allah. Or you can direct yourself and, and turn towards anybody other than Allah. بأي نوع من أنواع العبادات. It doesn't matter whichever type of ibadah is. It is you're not allowed to divert it for anybody other than Allah تبارك وتعالى. Whether that is a ملك مقربا أو نبيا مرسلا. Whether it is a prophet that was sent by Allah, or it if or if it is an angel that is close to Allah تبارك وتعالى. It doesn't matter. Another thing that we need to stand over here is that the Sheikh mentions. وَلَا نَبِيُّ الْمُرْسَلِ So what's the difference between a Rasul and a Nabi? The Shaykh says, وَلَا نَبِيُّ and a Prophet مُرْسَلٌ who is sent. So what's the difference between a Nabi, a Prophet, and a Rasul, a Messenger? Before I do mention it, 
I'm going to give you references of places where you could go and find out more, research it yourself more. You can look into it a bit more. I'm just going to give you a quick answer. If you go to the book written by Ibn Hazm Al Muhalla, first volume, page page fifty, with the Tahqiq of Ahmed Shakir, Maktaba to Dar Turath, the publication that is Maktaba to Dar Turath, Al Qahira. Or you go to the book Al Mufhim Lima Ashkala Min Talqis Sahih Muslim. Written by Abu Abbas Al Qurtubi, Rahimahullah. The seventh volume, page 40, the publication is Darum Nukathir Dimashqa. Or you go to the book, which is the third, An <coughs> Nubuwat, Libnu Taymiyyat, Rahimahullah. Page 255, Darul Kutub Al Ilmiya, Beirut that publication and the final reference is Sharh Al-Aqidat al the first volume page 155 the Tahqiq of Abdullah Turki and Shu'ayb Al-Arna'ut Mu'assasat Al-Risala sometimes it's published as one copy one volume and sometimes it's Mu'assasat Al-Risala published in two volumes this one is when, the, when it's a two volume one So you can find out the difference between a Nabi and a Rasul in those references that I gave you. But in short, a Nabi is as it's commonly said. هو من أوحي إليه بشرع A Nabi, a Prophet is the one who revelation has been sent down to him. With a, a revelation has been sent to him with a legislation. وَأُمِرَ بِتَبْلِيغِهِ And he was commanded to convey it. إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ to a people مُوَافِقِينَ لَهُ that are in agreement with him أو أو لَمْ يُؤْمَرْ بِالتَّبْلِيغ أو he wasn't, he wasn't commanded to convey it he wasn't and the evidence that they use for that definition is that the hadith of the Prophet where he said Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. And the Nabiya, uh, that there's going to be a Prophet, Yati yawm al qiyamati, he will come the day of judgment, walaysa ma'ahu ahadun, there's nobody with him. And Imam al Bukhari narrated it in Kitab al Raqaq, Riqaq, <coughs> under the chapter, Babu yadkhulu jannat sab'una alfan bi ghayri hisab. On the, authority, in, on the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, anhuma. That the Prophet said, عُرِضَتْ عَلَيَّ الْأُمَمْ فَأَخَذَ النَّبِيُّ يَمُرُّ مَعَهُ الْأُمَّةِ وَالنَّبِيُّ يَمُرُّ مَعَهُ النَّفَرُ وَالنَّبِيُّ يَمُرُّ مَعَهُ الْعَشَرَةُ وَالنَّبِيُّ يَمُرُّ مَعَهُ الْخَمْسَةُ وَالنَّبِيُّ يَمُرُّ وَحْدَهُ An Imam Muslim's wording is that وَالنَّبِيُّ لَيْسَ مَعَهُ أَحَدٌ And a Prophet that there's no one with him. So they said that this Re, the reason why this Prophet has no one with him is because he wasn't commanded to convey it. That's what some of the qawl of some of the ulama. Those place, those sources I gave you, if you read more, they will give you more explanation, inshaAllah ta'ala. As for the Rasul, they said it is what? Man uhiya ilayhi bi shar'in. Revelation has been sent to him with a legislation. O kitabin or a book. وَأُمِّرَ بِتَبْلِيغِهِ And he was told, pay attention here. He was told to convey this message إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مُخَالِفِينَ But to a people who oppose him. Very good. And the evidence that they use that a, prof, a, a, a prophet, a nabi, is sent. That a prophet is sent to a people who are in agreement with him. Is the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, Abu Huraira narrated. You can find it in Sahih al-Bukhari, Kitab al-Hadith al-Anbiya, Babu ma dhukra anin an Bani Israel. 
and Imam al-Bukhari bisanadihi from his own chain of narration he brings it from Abu Hurairah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said kanat banu Israel tasusuhum al-anbiya kullama halaka nabiyun khalafahu nabiyun banu Israel their matters were run and it was controlled the word tasusuhum is the word siyasa that's where it's taken from the prophets would run their affairs كلما every time هلك نبي a prophet died خلفه نبي then another prophet will take over so that other prophet will only take over what he's already established are you there he's not being sent down to a people who oppose him this new prophet is sent to a people who are already in agreement with the message that he's going to come with he's just going to carry on from where the previous prophet left off from That is their definition that they gave those ulama and those references in those places. Now we move on to Mas'alatu Thalitha, the third matter that the author Rahimahullah mentions. The Shaykh Rahimahullah he moved on to the third Mas'ala, which is the Muqaddimah. The second muqaddimah. The first muqaddimah had how many masail? Four masala. I'm a four masail. And the second muqaddimah has three masail. And this is the last of of it. So once we once we do this masala, inshallah ta'ala, the third, we would have been finished and over and done with the second muqaddimah. The Shaykh Rahimahullah, he says, أَنَّ مَنْ أَطَاعَ الرَّسُولَ وَوَحَّدَ اللَّهَ لَا يَجُوزُ لَهُ مُوَالَاتُ مَنْ حَادَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ The Shaykh Rahimahullah, he says, anyone who obeys the Messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, وواحد الله and singles Allah. So the person who obeys the messenger, who believes in the messenger, obeys the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. وواحد الله and comes with توحيد. لا يجوز له. It is not permissible for him or her. موالاته to have ولاء. And we're going to speak about that. من حاد الله ورسوله. The person who went against Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and opposed Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Walau kana aqraba qareeb. Even if this person is the closest person to you and the closest relative. So what does the word muwalat mean? The word muwalat, its meaning is it is that you take him as an ally. And it originally comes from the word al walaya And walaya means mahabba, love. Allah said in the Quran, Hunalika al walaya lillahi al haqq. In Surah Al Kahf. Surah Al Kahf, Ayah 44. What does it mean? هناك الولاية للحق. It means هناك المحبة والمودة والنصرة لله الحق. الولاية هي means what? And here is the what? The ولاية of which I said it means المحبة and المودة and نصرة love نصرة support للحق to the truth. So, what is aslu al muwalati? What's the original meaning of muwalat? What's the asal of muwalat? Al mahabba, love. Wal muwadda, that's the asal. That's what? Aslu al muwalat is al mahabba wal muwadda. And that's why the author, rahimahullah, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab used the ayah لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون 
Yuaduna. He used that ayah because it has the word muwadda in there. And he said in his statement, "Anna man ata'a al-rasula wa wahhad Allah la yajuzu lahu muwalatu." And what ayah did he bring? Ayah 22, Surah Al-Mujadala, the last uh, last ayah, which has in it, which has in it, لا تجد قوم يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون يوا يوادون. So what did Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab explain the mualat in uh, his statement to mean? Mualat is muadda, right? Al mualat it is al muaddatu because the, there's a relationship between his statement and the ayah which he brought. Very good. The asal, are you with me, brothers? Of mualat, I said is what? Love and muadda. Sah? So that means al mualat, the asal of it is in the qalb. It's in the heart. Are you there? And it means mahabbatu shirki, loving shirk. Or mahabbatu ahli shirki, or loving the people of shirk and kufr. Didn't we define it? Did we not explain what it means? Are you, are you, are you, are you I hope we're all paying attention here. We explained what mualat means. And we we proved that the Shaykh Rahimahullah, when he said, "Anna man ata' al Rasula, wa wahhad Allah, la yajuz lahu mualatu," and then he brought the ayah, "La tajidu qawm yu'minun billahi wal yawm al akhir yuaduna." The word yuaduna is la yajuz, la yajuz lahu mualatu, and this goes against the meaning of the ulama of the language when they explain the word mualat. So he explained it. So I'm allowed to now say that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab explained muwala to mean muwadda. And we all know that loving is an act of the heart. It's not a matter two people will differ on. And it is not a matter two goats would help headbutt one another on. Meaning something that is known out of necessity. And then from that we say معناه, that it means أن أصل الموالات, that the أصل of موالات is what? في القلب, it's in the heart. It's in the heart. And it means محبة الشرك, loving shirk أو محبة أهل الشرك والكفر. It means loving shirk and loving the people of shirk. So the foundation of the religion is what? That the person who utters La ilaha illallah That he loves this word He loves this word He doesn't just love the word He also loves وَمَا دَلَّتْ عَلَيْهِ And that which he indicates مِنَ التوحيد. He loves it وَيُحِبُّ أَهْلَهَا And he loves the people who hold up to this word and he dislikes and he hates shirk. Because it goes against the word in which he loves and the meaning in which he loves, which is a tawheed. It goes against that. And he hates the people who carry the shirk. So here we go into the concept which is what? Al wala'i wal bara, loving and hating. So wala is what? Al-hub. Bara is what? Al-bughd. Al-wala is to love. And al-bara means what? To hate. So when somebody says al-wala wal-bara fillahi, he means al-hub wal-bughd fillah. It means love and hate for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Or else you can say if you wish to, 
So we have al-wala wal-bara. Pay attention. That's one. You can also say al-hubbu wal bughdu which is the second. You can also even say al-mualati wal-mu'adati. All three of them are the same. We have three things you have to understand, which is al-wala'i wal-bara'i, al-hubbi al-hubbu wal bughdu al-mualatu wal mu'adatu. All three of them are what? Bima'nan wahid. They all mean the same. And all of them, for asluhu al-qalb, the asal and the foundation is the heart. Mahabbatu al-qalb is the love of the heart. So if a person's heart loves shirk, he becomes muwaliyan li shirki. He becomes muwaliyan li shirki. He has wala for shirk. If a person loves the people of shirk, ahlu shirk, he becomes muwaliyan li ahli shirki. If a person loves in his heart iman, he becomes muwaliyan lil imani. If a person loves Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he becomes muwaliyan lillahi. If the heart loves the messenger, sara waliyan wa muwaliyan lil rasuli, he becomes a wali and a muwaliyan lil rasuli to the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. If the heart loves the mu'minin, he becomes what? Mu'aliyan wa waliyan lil mu'minin. And that's what Allah meant in the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah 55 to ayah 56. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَإِنَّ حِزْبَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ What does it mean? وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَإِنَّ حِزْبَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ It means the one who loves Allah and his messenger. <coughs> Question that arises now. Is mu'alat, pay attention, are you there? Is mu'alat kufrun or is it a kabiratun min al-kabair? Pay attention. Is mu'alat of the disbelievers, mu'alatul mushrikeen wal kuffar, for a person to have mu'alat, to the mushrikeen and the kuffar. Is he a kafir for that? Huh? Or is it not kufr, akbar, but it is a kabiratun min al-kabair. It's a major sin. What is correct is, what is correct is that the mu'alat of the mushrikeen and the kuffar is muharramatun wa kabiratun min al-kabairi. It is haram and it's a major sin. And it can reach. وَقَدْ تَصِلُ بِصَاحِبِهَا إِلَى الْكُفْرِ وَالشِّرْكِ It can make a person reach to kufr and shirk. And because of that, so there doesn't come any contradiction or mis misunderstanding the ulama, the people of knowledge, they categorize the muwalat into two types, or they categorize this concept of al wala wal bara into two types. They said there is something called at tawalli, and there is something called al muwalatu. The scholars they said this. There's something called at tawalli, and there is something called al muwalatu. What does At-Tawalli mean? At-Tawalli means 
Mahabbatu shirki wa ahlu shirki. It means loving shirk and the people of shirk. Mahabbatu kufri wa ahlu kufri. It means loving kufr and the people of kufr. Or it is giving nusratil kuffari, giving victory to the kuffar over the Muslims. You're aiding and you're supporting the disbelievers over the believers, but with an intention. It has to be with this intention. Qasidan dhuhur al kufri al Islam. You want Islam, sorry, you want kufr to become apparent over Islam. You want kufr to be prevalent and apparent on this earth. And you want Islam to be destroyed. That is the meaning of at tawalli So pay attention. He's aiding the disbelievers over the believers. Qasidan dhuhur al kufri al Islam with the intention that disbelief, kufr, becomes apparent and Islam is destroyed. That's his intention. If he's doing it for any other reason other than that, huh? It goes back to mu'alat. It's not tawalli. <sighs> Pay attention again, brothers. I want to emphasize on something. I just said to you, at tawalli means what? It means mahabba to shirki. It means you love shirk. Is that it? La, la, la. Wa ahlu shirki. The wow here is atf. It means you love both of them. Observe the word with me here. It means you love shirk. And you love ahlu shirk. Jami'an mujtami'atan. Both of them at the same time. You actually love the kufr. And you love the person who's coming with the kufr. Both of them at the same time. You love the shirk. And you love the mushrik. Both of them. Or, are you there? He doesn't even like shirk. This person actually hates shirk. But he's giving aid to the mushrik. Over the Muslims. But he has another intention, which is ظهور الشرك على الإسلام. But he wants shirk to become more apparent over Islam. He doesn't even like shirk. Does that make sense? But he wants it to become apparent. He wants it to be above Islam. This is Kufur Akbar, those which I mentioned. If the Muslim does that, Sara Riddatan, it's an apostasy and leaves the religion of Islam. So let me repeat that again. The first one is that. Mahabbatu shirki wa ahli shirki. Together. He loves the shirk and he loves the people who are coming with the shirk. Simultaneously. Are you with me? The second is that لا يحب الشرك. He doesn't love shirk. ولكن ينصر المشركة. But he's given victory and aid, support to the disbeliever. على المسلم over a believer. Qasidan with the intention of Dhuhur al shirki that shirk becomes apparent. Ala al Islami over Islam. That two scenarios that I mentioned, or those two points, this is Kufur Akbar. And any Muslim who does that, Sara Murtaddan, he becomes a person who leaves a fold of al Islam. The second one, which is Mualat. Mualat is Muharraba, it's a Kabiratum min al Kabair. It is not. It is not what? Mualat is what? <sighs> Mualat is not Kufur Akbar. It is Kabirat min al Kabair. And what does it mean? The person loves the Kafir and he loves the Mushrik. لِأَجْلِ دُنْيَاهُمْ He loves him for worldly issues. Or he loves them 
because of a because of a what? Because of the fact that he's a relative and a family member of yours. So what's the Dabi that I gave you here right now? What's the definition I gave you here? Mahabba to ahli shirki loving the people of shirk li ajili dunya for worldly reasons. There is no help and aiding for them. If he aids them and supports them, with the intention of Islam becoming low and kufr becoming high, then it falls under tawilya, as I mentioned. But he loves them for worldly reasons. And he's not aiding or supporting them. He's loving the kafir and the mushrik li dunya, worldly reasons. This is a muharramun wa ma'asiyatun wa laysa kufran. This is a sin and it is not kufr. And the evidence for that is qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, La tat تَخِذُوا عَدُوِّي وَعَدُوَّكُمْ أَوْلِيَاءَ تُلْقُونَ إِلَيْهِمْ بِالْمَوَدَّةِ This ayah Allah says, O oh, those of you who believe, Iman is still affirmed for them. The Iman is not being stripped from them. O oh, those of you who believe, لَا تَتَّخِذُوا Do not take عَدُوِّي my enemies وَعَدُوَّكُمْ and your enemies أَوْلِيَاءَ don't take them as allies تُلْقُونَ إِلَيْهِمْ بِالْمَوَدَّةِ you throw at them love the scholars what did they say in this ayah أَثْبَتَ اللَّهُ Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala affirmed جَلَّ وَعَلَى في هذه الآية in this verse أَنَّهُ حَصَلَ that it has come for these people Ism al Imani, the title Iman is still with them. Allah referred to them as Yayu Ladin Amanu. Whilst they have taken what? Whilst they have taken the Mushrikeen and the Kufar Awliya, bi ilqa il mawaddatilam, throwing mawadda to them. Are you with me? Throwing mawadda to them. Allah is still referring to them as what? Allah still is referring to them as Mu'minin. And what has been transmitted in Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim, is the story that's very well known in Sahih al-Bukhari, Kitab al-Jihadi wa sir Bab al-Jasus, the chapter of Jasus. And also Muslim brings it in Hadith Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Imam Muslim brings it on the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the story of what? Hatib ibn Abi Balta. The story of what? Hatib ibn Abi Balta. And the story is as follows. The story is as follows. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alayhi Salatu Wasallam Information of his Hatib bin Abi Balta'a went and he passed that information of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he gave it to Quraysh, Kuffar of Quraysh. He went and he gave them this information. This... And this is something very big. This is not a very light issue. Hadi Adima min al Adaim. It's from the great things. And what he told them in that letter, what was it, brothers? It was actually telling them to be cautious and to be careful. He was actually informing them to be careful and to be cautious. When the matter became clear to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and their companions, when it became clear to them, Umar stood up and he said to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, Ya Rasulallah, O Messenger of Allah, Da'ni adriba, adribu, Da'ni leave me, adribu, I want to smack, Unaka, unaka hadha al-munafiq, the neck of this hypocrite. I want to smack his neck. 
The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said something in response to Umar's statement. Some people will say to you, they use as an argument and they say to you that Hatib in Ibn Abi Balta'a, when Umar called him a munafiq, the Prophet allowed him to say that. And that the Prophet did not respond to him. <laughs> and that's a lie. On the other side of the, the on the side of the person who's saying that. He's either ignorant and he doesn't know, or either he's lying. Because the Messenger وسلم, corrected Umar. The Prophet وسلم, corrected Umar by saying to Umar, Leave him alone. Your brother has told you the truth. <coughs> so did the, the Prophet وسلم, did not agree to the statement of Umar of calling his brother a munafiq. Rather, the Messenger والسلام, he turned towards Hatib and he said to Hatib, ما حملك على ما صنعت What made you fall into? I mean, what made you do what you did? Brothers, you have to pay attention to this and sisters who are listening. If what Hatib did was kufr and it was kufr akbar why would the Prophet ask him for? Why did you do it for? Why would the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ask him? Because remember those people who insulted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he insulted the companions and they made they mocked the religion. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't wait for their excuses. Their kufr came down straight away. قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِي وَرَسُولِي كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ don't look for excuses. Don't try to find yourselves way out. You are kufar. Even when they try to explain their situation and say, Ya Messenger of Allah, this was our answer. This was why we did it. We were only joking. Inna kunna nakhud wa nal'ab. We were only joking. We were only spending time having fun. It was said to them, La ta'atadiru. Don't try to look for excuses. Whereas Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the messenger wants an answer from him. Why did you do it? He's asking him. The reason why the Prophet would ask him that is because it could either be falling under tawalli or it could be muwalat. And the Prophet wants to know which of the two it is. Araftum. What Hatib did right now could be aiding the disbelievers. And why is he aiding him? So kufr becomes high and Islam goes down. There could be that possibility. Huh? Or it is or he's helping them and aiding them for worldly reasons. If it's for worldly reasons, then it falls under muwalat, which is kabiratu min al-kabair. We clearly know what he did right now. Hatib bin Abi Balta is what? Is muwalat, without a shadow of a doubt. What's the evidence for that? Qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah in Surah uh, Mumtahina, the ayah, first ayah. Ya ladina amanu. The Hatib is the one who's been spoken about here. Bil Mawadda. You showed Mawadda. Mawadda, we said, is what? Mualat. So Hatib showed Mualat to them. But the Messenger, alayhi salatu was salam, wanted to know was what Hatib did. Li dunya, was it for worldly reasons? Or did he do it? ظهور الشرك على الإسلام that shirk becomes apparent over Islam which of the two he did it for if he did it for tawalli or mualat that's what the messenger wanted to know and Hatib رضي الله تعالى عنه so what, do, what did I just say Hatib's intention is what's being looked for here the mere action is not enough the prophet wants to know his qasd his intention صحيح And that's what's going to tell us which of the two he's going to fall under. Hatib then said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Ma hamalani ala hadha, Nothing made me fall into this. I didn't do it. Mahabbata shirki. I loved shirk. Allahu Akbar. 
وَكَرَاهَةُ الْإِسْلَامِ And that I had hate for Islam. Look at how he realized straight away. He's trying to say, I'm not in the issue of tawalli. وَلَكِنْ بَتْ مَا مِنْ أَحَدِ مِنْ أَصْحَابِكَ There's not a companion from your companions or messenger of Allah here. إِلَّا وَلَهُ يَدٌ Except he has a hand. يَحْمِي بِهَا مَالَ He has a hand in Mecca. He has a family member in Mecca from Kufar of Quraysh who protects his family and his children for him. Their people are relatives. They're related, however much the situation may be. And their family is being looked after back home. I don't have that on Messenger of Allah. For Arad to, I, I, by doing for this for Quraysh, I was thinking, and I was what I wanted is, أَنْ يَكُونَ لِي بِذَلِكَ يَدٌ I just wanted a hand from them, aid. أَحْمِي بِهَا مَالِي So my, my wealth can be protected. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ The Prophet then said, صَدَقَ He told the truth. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لَهُ إِلَّا خَيْرًا Isn't this a refutation and a response to Umar رضي الله عنه? It is. صَدَقَ He told the truth, your brother. وَلَا تَقُولُوا And don't say anything to him. لَهُ إِلَّا خَيْرًا Except the truth. Except good. Don't say to your brother except good. Meaning don't call him a munafiq or anything else. Don't. Some people they come back and they say what Hatib did, there was a prevention for him. Something was preventing him from falling into the kufr. Everybody else you will, who does this is a kafir. As for Hatib is an exception. Why? Because he participated in Badr. And Badr is a mani' is a prevention for him. This answer is Oham in Bayt al-Ankabut. This is the weakest argument that could be put forward. The reason is because no alim, no scholar ever said being a Badri, being a person who participated in the battle of Badr is a mani' min mawani' al takfir is from the things that prevent you from becoming a kafir. No one ever said that. Not from the time of the Sahabas until today, no one ever said it. Rather, Allah said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ Muhammad, If you do shirk لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ Your actions will all nullify لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And you're going to be from those who are lost Whether you are prophet or not, it doesn't matter صح? Rather Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, what does he say? الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قُمْ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءَ Allah mentions 18 prophets, 18 prophets in that page. Allah says, لَإِنْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ If all those 18 prophets, any one of them associates partners with Allah, all their righteous actions will be nullified and they will be from the people of the hellfire. 18 prophets. Being prophets would not prevent them from that. Being a Badri will not prevent you and stop you from becoming a Kafir if you come with an act of Kufr. Sah? <laughs> but the reason why the Messenger وسلم, mentioned that Hatib was a Badri is because he wanted to show the companions that this man's heart is pure and he's a noble individual and his status is high. Not that Badr can stop him becoming, from becoming a kafir. So if this act was kufr, akbar, being a Badri will not stop him from it. Rather pay attention. Ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah qatibatan are unanimously in agreement that a righteous deed cannot prevent you from kufr akbar. This is an ijma'ah. It's an ijma'. Ibn Abdul Bar brings that ijma'. Ibn Taymiyyah brings that ijma'. Ibn Al Qayyim brings that ijma'. That having a righteous deed cannot prevent you from falling into kufr. Because Allah says in the ayah, "La in la in ashraqta la yahbatan amaluk." If you come with shirk akbar, 
I done Hajj every single year and I fasted every single Mondays and Thursdays and I pray Qiyamul Layl for the last 40 years. All of that won't benefit you. Shirk will nullify your righteous deeds. And Kufr will nullify your righteous deeds. So what we now learned, inshallah ta'ala, is the difference between a tawalli and muwalat. So when a person recites the ayah, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِ He needs to remember that that is tawalli. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُ That ayah is referring to what? وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ Tawalli. And tawalli we said is kufr akbar. With the meaning that we gave. As for muwalat, as for muwalat, it is muharramah, it is kabiratun min al-kabair, it's a major sin. It's a major? Major sin. We're going to finally conclude with this muqaddimah that the author rahimahullah brought. Because we've now finished what? We finished the second muqaddimah. What was the second muqaddimah about? It was about three points. The first point was, the first point was from the three muqaddimah, from the three masail, the three matters that are connected to the second muqaddimah is that the person knows the get goal and objective why Allah wa Taala created you. Sah? Why did Allah create you? And why did he bring you into, into this universe? He didn't create you without a purpose. He created you for a purpose. And he brought you to this world for a purpose and a goal. The second point that the Shaykh Rahimahullah talked about which was what? He spoke about that the path is one to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is not pleased with shirk. No one whether it be a prophet that was sent from Allah or an angel that is close to Allah, no one whatsoever can be associated partners with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The third thing that the Shaykh Rahimahullah spoke about, which is what? That there is not in the heart of a muwahid, a person of tawheed, that there is nothing in his heart of love for the mushrikeen and shirk. These three are usulul islami the foundations of the religion of Islam. I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, As'alullah jalla wa'ala an yaj'alani wa iyaakum mimman tahaqqaqu biha qawlan wa amalan wa a'tiqadan wa anqiyada. I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that he makes me and all of you ones who fulfill those three fundamentals in our speech and our actions and in our belief and in our submission. Anything which I have said that was wrong is from me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.